Welcome back to Jaku Farm. Continuing on from last time, you can see the fish pond build is ongoing. And if you remember what I told you last time, everything's getting done by hand because we can't get any heavy equipment here. So it's kind of a slow, laborious task. And it doesn't help that it's full of water already. But, the guys have been doing a great job, and you can see it's really starting to take shape. The overall dimensions are 10 meters by 20 meters, with potentially 2 meters deep. So that gives us what? 400 cubic meters? How's my counting? I think that's right. Previously I'd stated that I was hoping to get at least 5,000 fish. However, a pond this size, and after having discussed it with a wing, it's looking very much like we'll be closer to 10,000 fish. Which means we're probably going to need to purchase around maybe 12,000 fingerlings to grow because some of them will be lost possibly to predators and just general dying off but as luck would have it not only has a wing built several of these ponds before he used to actually manage a fish farm so he's got quite a lot of uh, accumulated knowledge on the subject and is pretty confident that this is going to work out quite nicely. Okay, fast forward a little bit again and you can see that's it done. There we go. Well, when I say it's done, it's not ready to put fish in it. Obviously, we're not going to put fish in that water. What we're going to have to do here is pump this water out and then refill it with clean water or even think about adding fish to it. Although they do say that tilapia are a very hardy fish, but I think this is basically just a giant puddle. I don't think it's a great condition for fish to be living in, no matter how hardy they are. So anyway, I've got a, a water pump ordered online, so we're just waiting for that to arrive. We have some hose bought already, ready to pump it all back into the jungle stream. And then once the water is cleared, we'll be ready to refill it. Now there has been some debate about the best way to do this. I was expecting to use some kind of plastic liner in order to keep the water clean, but according to Wing this isn't necessary. So I'm going to bow to his local knowledge and see how it goes. And uh, I'll be interested to see how that turns out when we, find, when we finally get round to it. I do, however, have a cunning plan for keeping the water clean and filtering it. I won't say exactly what that is yet, because I need to do some uh, research into it. But if it works, it could, work, it could be uh, a very nice solution to the problem. So I'll keep you tuned on that in further episodes. We've been trying to find somewhere locally who's, who sells uh, tilapia fingerlings. We've heard about somebody in a, near, in a nearby town. We're going to have to go and check him out. And uh, hopefully, he'll have 12,000 ready to go. While this has all been getting going on with the uh, fish pond, we've also been building a goat house. At the moment we have five goats and they need a place to live. And over there, we're going to section off a, a field area for them with a fence around it because the goats have got a habit of wandering around eating all our freshly planted uh, 
fruit trees. So we need to keep them away from that. Here you can see the guys are preparing the lumber again with the chainsaw. Again, that's our trees. Oh, look who's here. A fresh delivery from Carabao Express. May look like a pile of leaves that are carrying there, but what it actually is, is the roof of the goat house. Each of these panels is made from weaving uh, different kinds of leaves together. These are then layered on top of the roof and it works as a pretty effective roof actually and it keeps all the rain out and it's cheap and it's easy to make. There you have it, look. Very simple design, but very effective. And it can be easily replaced. you can see from here just how effective it is look the daylight getting through no rain will get through either That's another batch arrived. Hopefully this will be the last one. 
get the roof finished today. And here are the future residents waiting patiently for their brand new house. I say waiting patiently, but they're probably planning something. We're hoping this house is going to contain them, keep them out of trouble. But that's what these guys live for, so... We'll have to see how that goes. There we have it, look, that's the roof on. Fantastic. Now, the next thing is to build a fence that is going to keep these goats inside their field. This is going to be the challenge. Have the rolls of barbed wire. Hopefully that will do the trick. Right, and that's it. Time will tell if this is going to be effective at holding the goats inside, but at this point in time it's looking pretty good. Hold on, what's going on here? Looks like it's feeding time for the ducks. Recognize their food bowl, look. Yep, here they come. Chickens as well. Inside the turkeys, oh, hold on, hold on. Here comes now Hector. Sometimes we have to watch El, El Hector and his uh, posse. They've got a habit of bullying the other birds because they're so much bigger. They seem to be behaving themselves this time. Notice the goats in the background there, look. Standing on their terraces. And a nice vantage point there so they can survey everything around them. I tell you, they're always up to something. That's it finished, that was quick. That's it again. Another day finished. 